Hello! It is now mid-January 2017 and the weather's roughly around zero. So I'm going to do a video that I've actually attempted to do about five times now. And that's because I never could get the tone right. This is, I'm going to be reviewing Advanced Bushcraft from Dave Canterbury and the Pathfinder School. And I've read the book cover to cover about three or four times now and compared it to my usual favorites. So let's have a look. I'm Dean and this is the Alberta Bushcrafter Channel. My two favorite books at this point in time, and there's a third coming, are Morris Kahansky's Bushcraft and John Lofty Wiseman's The SAS Survival Guide, or Survival Handbook. Any climate, any situation. The reason I like these books is, well, I'm going to leave you with one good principle about a good book. A good book should not require additional resources. So, you should be able to look into a good bushcraft book and it's going to tell you, okay, this is what to do. This is how to do it. For example, on Morse Kahansky's book, I'm just going to riffle through this thing. You will see pictures on almost every page. You will see discussions on you know, how to cut a sapling properly without poking your eye out or injuring yourself. Ah, there's a ton on axe craft. There's an entire chapter on axe craft. There's an entire chapter on saw craft. An entire chapter on shelter. But there's illustrations for everything. And with the SAS Survival Handbook, again, we'll flip through this. Tons of illustrations. What's my point? My point is, if you are in the deep bush, you may be out of cell phone range, most likely, and you can't just pull up your YouTube app on your phone and go to the Wilderness Outfitters channel and look up a process, look up how to do something. You're not going to have YouTube in a situation where the power's out. You may not have YouTube. In a previous video, I reviewed Bushcraft 101, and I didn't find it as comprehensive as either of my two favorite books, but... Really, I mean, it's your pack and the five C's, which is cutting tool, cordage, container, uh, cover element, and combustion. Those are your big five. And that's good. I mean, that is your basic survival kit right there. I like that principle. I like the fact he goes through that. He also goes through a bit about shelter craft. A little bit of actually hmm, 10 pages on fires and navigating terrain, a little bit on trees, and a lot on trapping. So that's the good thing is, write what you know. I do recall though in my previous video, my biggest complaint, not a lot of pictures. Speaking of not, he does have a good few, and that's all right with me. But like cooking, he only goes into a little bit on pot cranes and different suspension systems where this one oh man there are tons he's got a big chunk of his firecraft section is on cooking and that's the thing he he covers with fire making you know paragraph on each one so he's got a paragraph or two on lighters ferro rods this is what gets interesting is he's got a bit on the bow drill a few pages uh, a little bit on shelter craft What's interesting is, take a look at this and remember this. There's a bird nest in there. Well, you saw my problem with the first one, which is Bushcraft 101 does not have a lot of illustrations, and it's a lot of writing about something, but I point out, in my day job, part of my job is training, and I'm an, I, I'm an IT professional, and I do a lot of IT training. One of the biggest things I've noticed, and I've done this for decades now, is people learn visually. You can't just write something out and get them to grasp the concept easily. If they have illustrations, so much the better. And that's actually how people really start learning. Advanced Bushcraft covers what? It covers now the 10 C's. He's got 
wooden tools and digging machines. He's got what he calls advanced firecraft. That is primitive fire starting, bow and drill, flint and steel, solar fire. Well, what's funny is that's the exact same stuff he covered in the original book. Sheltering. There's about five shelter diagrams in here, which we will see. There's a little bit more on knots. There's a bit more on trapping, and he's got some more on preserving food sources, hide preservation, woodworking, and blacksmithing. Well, I can't see how you're going to set up a forge in the middle of um, the forest. He's talking more permanent camp stuff here, which, I mean, that's well and good. But that's one of the things. Let's go into the tools. There's a mall right there. Maybe a page. There's a page on wedges. Actually, half a page, really. That doesn't even cover um, using compression wood for the best wedges. There's a simple Spanish windlass here. Which, really, to learn how to operate, you've got to go to the YouTube channel. Uh, he does have a little bit more on what he calls advanced firecraft. He's got several pages on our old friend. Oh, hey, there's the bird's nest again. See, same illustration. He's kind of going over what he did the first time. That's all you have on the bow drill as far as illustrations. Not great. The reason I say that is this book. He's got over half a dozen different ways to start, start fire with a bow drill. Different techniques, different woods, a lot more discussion on what's the best drill, what's the best bow, what's the best fireboard. So this is the thing, is shelter bit, not a lot. Like for permanent shelter, not a great deal. Knots, it's a little better on. This book, on the other hand, excels on knots. You don't need to know too many, but it's good to know about a dozen of them. We'll probably have a video on that sometime soon. So we got the knots. Here's where it gets interesting. Here's a peg loom on weaving. There's also a bit more on cordage. There's a peg loom. It does not say. It says how to construct one. However, do you see a diagram on how to use it? And the discussion isn't great either. Got an ankle loom here. There's no picture of it. Okay, well, yeah, here we go. There's the picture. Sorry. Spoke too soon. But it's about two pages on these. There's a section on net making and a waste loom and everything. And it's just a discussion. There's no pictures at all. Uh, his stuff on trapping is better. So again, write what you know. But, again, we start getting into this and it's not terribly, uh, it's not terribly decent. Like there's a bit on sewing here, there's a, a bit on basic machines, does not say how to use it. For example, this guy up here, the shingle fro. Oh, sorry, that one. The shingle fro. I have one of these. I just picked it up. I've used one before. A paragraph isn't very much on how to use it, neither with the draw knife beneath it, right? And with the bow saw, or in this case, you know, just a buck saw, Morskahansky devotes an entire chapter to this stuff. Wood processing. He's got a couple of paragraphs. So the conclusion to this, you've heard me say it, books. Instructional books have to be visual. They really do. So that's where these books excel because there are hundreds and hundreds of illustrations in here. Uh, almost every second page in some cases. In these, not so much. And because you likely won't have an internet connection to learn some of these skills and look them up. If you've got one of these in the car, you're going camping or something. They're not as helpful as a book like that. So that's where I've got to really say, I've got a bit of a thumbs down on these books. Um, they're not as good as some of the others. Are they going to go off my shelf? I'm going to get rid of them? No. No, there are some concepts in here that are really good. But the overall delivery leaves something to be desired. And I actually can speak from experience here because, you know, technical writer, technical trainer, I do this stuff. So... 
that's it. I am more disappointed in these books than I can be critical. I've been critical enough, mind you. But yeah, I'm a bit more disappointed because the Wilderness Outfitters channel and Dave Canterbury's videos on YouTube are top-notch and they're fantastic. I haven't even watched all of them because there's literally probably over a thousand now. And some of the some of the stuff I don't actually use. I wouldn't have a need for it. Uh, the stuff is just marvelous. It is sad that the, the, it doesn't translate. All that information from the YouTube channel doesn't translate into these books. And that is disappointing. It's not disappointing that I spent money on it. It's just disappointing that, you know, I just wish there was a lot more in those books. So that's it for the review. I'm going to leave you on a high note. This book, on the other hand, is one of the best books around. It is northern bushcraft, but a lot of it can be adapted to other regions. Whereas these books can't. This book is going to be on an upcoming contest. So I've got a copy of this for you guys. Because since I can now find it in my supermarket up here. All right. Well, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys all for watching and putting up with me. Um, like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'm Dean. This is the Alberta Bushcrafter Channel. And take care. And good day.